After you've quantitated your data in SeekMonk, rather than looking through the entire data set manually, you can now apply filters to pull out regions of interest. Filters apply to the current probe set and the current quantitation and what you do with a filter is essentially you take a starting list of probes and you filter it to get a subset of that list. As you make filtered lists of probes they will appear in the probe lists folder of your data view here in a tree fashion so that uh, each new probe list will branch off from the probe list that it was created from. There are a series of filters that you can apply all of which are found under the filtering menu. To show a simple example I'm going to do a simple filter on values for each probe individually. So in this case I'm going to select my K4 data set here and say that my current quantitative value would have to be greater than 5 for the one data set that I've selected. You can see in the filter description at the top it's telling me which probe list I'm starting from, so in this case all probes and how many probes are in there. I run the filter and it says that it's found nearly 17,000 probes. It will automatically make up a name for the list, but I can change that either here or afterwards. And if I say OK to this, the box will stay open, but my new list will now appear in my list of probe lists. Once you've made a filtered list within SeekMonk, if you select that filtered list, your display will immediately update to show only the probes that are present in that filtered list and all of the other views, graphs and analyses that you run will use only the probes that are in the currently selected filtered list as their starting point. To go through the other options that you have in the filtering menu here the simplest kind of filter is to filter just on the values that you have. This applies to the currently quantitated values and it's perfectly possible to re-quantitate your data in several ways whilst preserving your current list of probes. So the simplest one of these is to filter on individual probe values, so that's filtering every probe independently from every other one. You can also choose to filter over a window where you specify a larger region and the value will be averaged over that window and the set of probes within that window will pass or fail as a whole. Finally you can filter on the position in distribution so in this case instead of specifying an actual numerical cutoff you specify a percentage through the distribution so you can remove the top 1% of probes or something similar to that. Rather than filtering on values you can also filter on value differences again either individually or in a window. In this case instead of selecting one probe you select uh, one data store you select two data stores and then you can specify the size of the difference between those data stores so here I'm looking for uh, probes that are specifically enriched in K27 above K4 if I had more than one data store selected in either of these groups that would then perform all the pairwise comparisons possible and I would then be prompted to say whether I wanted to filter on the average difference, the maximum or the minimum difference. Other filters that I can do here, I can also have some statistical options. I can do a box whisker filter. This essentially finds outliers from the current distribution. Uh, it uses the same procedure as you would use for drawing a box whisker plot where it calculates a, a normal distribution and then looks for the disc, uh, points that deviate from that. The nice thing about a box whisker plot is it doesn't assume any kind of particular distribution to your data so it doesn't matter if it's normally distributed or it has an unusual distribution you could still use this to find outliers from it. If you want to take a more traditional statistical approach there are two options here. Uh, you can do a windowed replicate filter in a windowed replicate filter, what you specify is one or more data stores to test, a p-value cutoff and a window size. And what the program will do is it will run the window of that size across your data, collecting sets of probes in each window. And it will assume that those probes are replicates of each other uh, and therefore can test the distribution of those probes against either a fixed value if you just have a one data store selected so it'll test for departure from zero. If you select two data stores it will do a t-test to test them against each other and if you have more than two it will do an ANOVA to test those. So in this case I'll make a slightly larger window. 
leave my p-value on there. It's important for any statistical test that you apply multiple testing correction to correct for the number of tests that you've performed so that your p-values actually still have meaning. And again, I can see that I can pick out probes where there is a consistent effect over a window of 50 kilobases in this case. The other type of statistical test I have in here is the replicate set statistical test. This is uh, useful where you actually have sufficient data sets brought in that you have true biological replicates and you need at least three biological replicates to be able to perform this kind of analysis uh, and once you have that the options are very similar. In this case I don't have enough replicates here but if I'd set them up I could choose one, two or more sets to test and again it would either use uh, a single t-test to test for a dis deviation from zero or testing two sets against each other or using ANOVA to compare multiple sets. Other filters in here are not statistical in nature but more physical. So for instance you can filter by position and in this case you can just specify a chromosome, uh, a strand for your probes and a uh, position. These are quite useful in itself but it's particularly useful because the default values on here will be whatever it is you're currently looking at. So if you don't use it for anything else it's useful as a remember what I'm looking at now filter. So if I have some particular region that I'm particularly interested in, I can say filter by position, keep the defaults, and that list now will simply be the probes within the window that I'm looking at. Other things that are useful in here, filtering by probe length, if you've done a probe generation which has generated probes of different lengths, so for instance putting a probe over every gene, you can then subsequently filter those by length. It's very simple, you just specify an upper and lower length limit and then it will filter probes within that set. Uh, filtering by interprobe distance can be useful if you're looking for either periodicity in your data, so you're specifically interested in probes separated by a certain distance or range of distances. It can also be used to find probes which are isolated or probes which occur in a cluster depending on how you apply it. Filtering by features allows you to relate probe sets that you've got to any of your feature annotation tracks. So if I were to pick a list, filter by features, I can then select the type of feature I want to annotate against or to filter against and then say what kind of relationship my probe must have to that feature. Uh, so in this case I'll look for probes that are overlapping a coding sequence and again that will find me a list on here. And then finally the last one is if you've made some probe lists up you can then combine them in any way that you choose so that you can select two probe lists and define the relationship they must have to each other. So I could say things that are enriched but do not overlap with the coding sequence and it will then put those lists together for me. All of your probe lists will appear in the data window over here. Each probe list will have the name that was associated with it, either the one you supplied or the default name that was given to it, and the number of probes that are present in that list. If you're ever not sure about the uh, conditions you use to create a probe list, you can right mouse click on the list and say view list, and as well as producing a list of the hits that you got, there will be a description at the top that tells you the exact parameters that were used to define that probe list in the first place. If you do the same thing on the all probes list at the top and view list, what you'll see at the top is the parameters used for the uh, probe generator right at the start when you first generated your probe set. These are the parameters you used for that. If you choose to requantitate your data, as long as you're leaving your set of probes being the same, that's no problem. You can requantitate and your list of probes on here will not be affected. That's because the list here doesn't apply to the values, it applies to the set of probes and the set of probes hasn't changed. If however you choose to redefine your probes, you will actually get a warning that redefining your probes will actually wipe out all of the existing quantitation and probe lists that you have made. So you might want to save your, probe, save your project before you go on to do that.